Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to replace a broken hammer in a piano. So, uh, this note right here, as you can see, let's get the camera down in there and you can see the, can you see the broken shank there? The top of the shank. Get it down. Yeah, there you go. You can see where all of these other shanks go up and this one is split so the brake is runs that whole line there and uh, I did find the shank inside the piano with of course attached to the hammer this happens from time to time I, I probably do this repair in in a customer's home I don't know maybe maybe not once a week but not too far from that it's a pretty common thing to do especially on these older pianos it's, it's a very common thing to do um, okay, let's talk about what we're shooting for and then I'll talk to you about how to get there. When I have the, when I have the hammer, like in this case, what I'm shooting for is uh, I'm, I'm, I want the new hammer to be, to be uh, indistinguishable from, from its neighbors. So the same height and the same striking distance or striking point right here strike point so so that means that the rake can't be one way or the other it's got to be straight on and also this angle here needs to be correct and uh, and then of course you know it needs to be the same height as the neighbors and then here's the here's the the final one the this is called the hammer butt right here and this is the catcher this assembly now, if the angle is correct, that catcher will be in a straight line with its neighbors. If it's at a, uh, an acute angle, that catcher will be too high because the, uh, the shank will still be resting on the, on the rest rail right here, but since it's an acute angle, it's not a 90 degree angle, that will make the, the catcher too high in comparison to its neighbors. If it's at an oblique angle, is that correct, Chris? Oblique? I want to say yes. Obtuse? Obtuse. 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 That's what it is. Yeah. Obtuse. Thank Sounds you. Better. If if it's at an obtuse angle, meaning greater than 90 degrees, mm -hmm. thank you, 10th uh, mm -hmm. grade trigonometry, yeah. Yeah. Uh, obtuse angle, then the catcher will be too low. So we want all of those conditions to be met. Now let's talk about how we get there. And there are various, there are various different ways to do it depending on if I'm in the shop, if I'm working on a piano like this in the shop, or if I'm in a customer's home. Um, results are similar. It's just easier and more enjoyable to do it in the shop because I have a drill press and I've got you know bigger, better tools and I just like doing it better. Um, oh, and then the other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is sometimes I don't find the hammer inside the piano. I carry around a case with, with I don't know, a few dozen different hammers of different sizes that I can sort of find one that fits well enough. But I still try and meet all of those uh, criteria, namely the, the angle, the rake, the height, and the catcher. So. Well, and not to mention, I try to find one that I think is going to sound similar. I'm not always totally successful at that, but but if if uh, um, if I if I put one in and it ends up not being a, a good sound match, I can usually voice the hammer um, to some degree to kind of disguise it, make it sound relatively similar to the others, and and that's another video talk about how to voice those hammers. Okay, so the first first thing is. I'm gonna I'm gonna use this shank. I never I never do repairs. I see repairs in these hammers all the time. Where where what 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 technicians will do is especially where the where the cut where the break is a long break like that, kind of along the grain of the of the shank. What I see what I'll see them do is is they'll glue it and then they'll wrap it with string and and it'll be wrapped, you know maybe. Uh, I don't know, it's like, it's solid string from here to here. And I just feel like, I just don't like that. I never have liked that uh, repair. And this repair is just so far superior. It looks better. Um, I don't know. I, I just take more pride in doing this work than I would, you know, leaving someone's house knowing that it has string in it. I just don't like that. Okay. <laughs> when I'm at the shop, I like to use this, run this through. 
and this knurls the it's called a knurler and it and it gives you that nice can you see that let's see if you can I think get an image of that what Okay. Well, we won't worry about it. You just take my word for it. What it does is it gives you a nice, clean, um, even pattern around that uh, where glue can where glue can uh, attach, and and it also gives glue escape. Whereas if you have a pretty tight hole and it goes in, it becomes a, a pneumatic or a, a hydraulic piston with the glue, and you can't push it in all the way. But where with this, the glue can escape, and it gets everywhere, and it's nice solid. First thing, first thing I do, I, I used to do this out of the piano, but I've, I've actually recently taken to doing it in the piano. Um, first thing I'll do is I'll crush the old shank around here. I'll just kind of keep crushing it. I like to use vice grips because of the compound jaws. The only pitfall to doing it this way is you can sometimes you, you've got to hold on, be sure that you're holding on at least to some degree to that uh, uh, hammer butt. Otherwise you risk uh, stressing that joint a little bit too much. So once I'm comfortable with how that is crushed, then it usually just falls right off. And it's getting there. And it usually gives me a nice clean. There we go. So I crushed it. If I if I tried to uh, if I tried to twist that shank off on the first or second time that I crushed that shank, um, it's not weak enough yet. And it and it and if you put that side bearing on the on the uh, on the flange, on the pinning, you can you can cause a problem in the pinning. But if you crush it a few times, it'll it should come right off. And plus, it's fairly it's fairly flush. Okay, and here's why I like to do it in the piano. This is in a in a customer's home. In the shop, it's a lot easier to get it right on. I could take this take this hammer out and do it in the drill press, and it would be it would be nice. But um, I guess for the sake of this video, I'll teach you this way as and you can figure out on your own how to take this out and just get it drilled in the drill press. Okay, long, long drill bit. It's a brad point, which uh, brad point ha has, that, has that little centering thing in the middle, and this is the diameter of a hammer shank. So what I like about this is I can visually, I can see that it's centered between its neighbors, and then I can hold it, I can hold that catcher at the right angle in comparison to its neighbors. So just kind of so I'm sort of watching um, make sure that I'm staying relatively straight up and down and I'm also watching to see that this catcher is even with its neighbors as well. I guess that's the, the, the disadvantage of doing it this way is, uh, is it leaves sawdust in the piano, which, um, if the piano is dirty anyway, I don't worry about it too much. But if it's if it's not, then I'll I'll bring my vacuum in and clean that up. Okay. I'll dry fit it. There's a little bit of play there. I'm going to take that, take that out of the picture. Okay. 
when I'm in a customer's home I carry wood glue with me so that's what I use for this um, hot, hot, hot hide glue is the uh, um, that's what a lot of guys use when you're in a customer's home that is completely impossible okay now I'm doing my best to hold it there for a minute while it uh, I've got it centered between these two and I've got the catcher even with its neighbors okay I'm thinking that uh, I'm going to let it dry for a minute while I drill the hammer just like that. I'll hold it up there. Just you know, use anything that holds that up in that so, so that it can set a little bit. Okay, now let's look at the drilling the hammer. <clears throat> when, I'm in, when I'm in a customer's home, this can be a little bit tricky. Um, there are jigs that, that you can get that uh, that you can set to the right angle that and then you can clamp the hammer and you can drill drill through that jig and it and it gives you the right angle. Um, oh would you grab that that vice or the vice grips for me? Um, and you know those are okay. I found that I found that I can do it by eye just kind of checking and drilling in and, and I can get it pretty darn accurate. But I prefer to have a drill press. So what, what I did here is uh, John here set it up before this video using the old shank and he aligned it so that with this drill bit in here this shank is straight up and down. Um, so, uh, so we got it at the right angle and we're sure that it's the same angle as it was there before. So same thing. I'm going to crush the wood, although of course there's not a, a flange pin, there's no pinning to really be concerned about here. I've got this vise that holds everything in place and then the, the vise is clamped. That's good. That's centered on that hole there. And now this is where um, it's, it's pretty common. I've seen on a lot of repairs um, that, uh, that, and I have done it before myself. I am guilty. I try to avoid it going all the way through the hammer. Of course, on grand pianos, that's intentional. You want the shank to go all the way through, but on uprights, it's it's you don't do it. And I I don't know the reason for that. It might be tradition, like everything else in piano work. So I'm just going to try to avoid going all the way through. Yeah, that's a nice deep. I have a look at that. It's a, it's deep. It's it's through the through the old shank. And actually, that's something that I didn't mention. You can usually feel when it goes through the old shank. You can feel it kind of. Oh, there it went. So, the shank should be softer wood than this. I think so. I think that's why you can feel it. And it's also possible that maybe the shank wasn't totally bottomed out with the glue. Um, there are other ways to get this out. Um, the PTG website shows you a, do you know where that curling iron is? That hair iron? Oh, I, I saw it a few days ago. Yeah, I saw it a few days ago. Plus. I've experimented with that and I don't know, I just like drilling it. What, <laughs> what the curling iron does, PT, there it is. The PTG has a, I, I haven't had, I've had so, so, so success with this. Um, it gives you instructions on how to do this. It's just a curling iron that uh, that I drilled to put put a new 
um, pivot point in the center, and then you heat it. You heat that up. The reason you put the new pivot point in the center is so that it's not so that it's flat against yeah. there, and it softens the old wood, the old uh, hot hide glue, which I think that's the reason that, that guys like to use hot hide glue because it's very reversible. But you know, I don't know. It's I find that this is maybe 50-50 in the way it works, and it also chars the wood. Mm. And maybe that's user error. That that might be me. Maybe I just need to learn to use it better, and I'm just kind of reverting back to what I'm comfortable with. But uh, anyway, so that's that's the other way to do it. Okay, and that's what I use for shank cutters. I just got them at Shaft. Um, you can also use dog toenail clippers to cut the shank. Let's see if that's. Usually, I'll give it more time than I've given it now to dry a little because I'm going to be putting some stress on it. Okay, so that looks good. You can see we've got a straight line. It's indistinguishable from its neighbors as far as the height of the catcher. I'm going to intentionally cut it too high because I'm going to dry fit that hammer a couple times. And see how that see how it goes and just keep taking slivers off the top until it's a bit more play there than I wanted. Okay, we're too high. And when you get close you can sand it down a little bit, right? That's right. You can. Okay, we're still too high. Okay, I like that. Um, it's maybe slightly, bring the camera down, you can see it's maybe slightly low. I might have taken just a sliver too much off. Um, I do like to have it completely uh, buried, have the, have the shank all the way to the, to the end of the hole. Um, so on this, what I'll do is, you know, I'll, I'll actually bring it up a little bit and the glue will be holding it. I, I don't find a big problem with that. It's it's less than a sixteenth of an inch. You could put some little shavings of wood. Yes, you could. So, uh, so we had the uh, camera have problems, so we're back, and we're going to glue this, get it finished up. We're almost done. It's pretty self-explanatory from here. So where we were, let's get the camera down at that angle, and you can see when it's buried, it is really, really close. Um, So, okay, let's do that. So again, a little wood glue in there. Now sometimes you use fish glue, right? Yeah, that's right. I like fish glue a lot. In fact, uh, in fact, when I hang a whole set of hammers, fish glue, fish glue is really nice and it's, and it's more reversible than, uh, than wood glue. It's got, it's got the convenience factor of wood glue, which is why I use wood glue, particularly in a customer's home. So convenient, but it's irreversible. Whereas fish glue, you have you have best of both worlds. Okay, let, let me get a shot of how much glue I like. Put it on. Now I'm gonna. Okay. Looks like I've got the angle there, correct? I've got that. Maybe I'll lift that up ever so slightly, just because I like it to look neat and even with its neighbors. And that glue, I've got a nice glue collar on underneath here and down there. 
And when that dries, that looks very nice. Very nice. Evenly spaced, even even height, even strike point, and a right angle on the catcher. Right angle and parallel to the other. Okay. All right. So. Uh, Replacing the hammer. Thanks for watching.